very distinguished audience, your final speaker tonight before we sent you home does not even have a college education. <laughs> they, I was prepared so well here, uh, I abandoned education basically after a fairly unsuccessful uh, freshman year called Plebe Year at the Naval Academy. And uh, that's a long story too. Uh, anyway, I'm at an age that my friends from Eagle Brook are getting very thin on the ground. I'm uh, working on my 82nd year and uh, with the help of my lovely wife who keeps very close. Check on me. Uh, I still get around and get to do things. And uh, it's an honor to be here tonight. And I want to say that the most important six years of my life were the six years I spent here. And I came in as a result of uh, being sent to a psychiatric type fellow who uh, recommended that I, I, was, I was not crazy, I was just so bored that I couldn't uh, deal with life. And uh, he said, there is one place in the world that uh, can fix you. There is a heaven on the hill for nuts like you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the way it worked out. I had two loving parents, my dad, Cecil, uh, dentist in Amherst, Massachusetts. He uh, was born in Prince Edward Island, uh, Canada. My mother was from an old family in Southwest Harbor, Maine. They, they loved me passionately, and they cared for me, and they would do anything for me, and they sacrificed considerably to keep me here for eight years. And I can say unequivocally, those were the most important years of my life. That's odd to uh, say that before you even get out of grade school. Uh, everything I did after that, it was the training that I received here, not necessarily printed out, but they stimulated me enough to change. I was, I was brought here as a, as human rubbish. Engelberg had a conscience. The top people applied and came. Eaglebrook saved a few slots for people that they thought could be salvaged. I was one of those. And I was salvaged. And everything I've done, and it's a damn lot, I owe the Eaglebrook School. Uh, and I'm very passionate about that. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say that uh, all of you who have been here, you are a member of a very privileged, very small club. There is no place else on the planet like Mount Tumta. The care with which we were treated, the attention that was paid, the quality of everyone, you look around here today, everyone's smiling. All the workers, the, the, the teachers are dedicated, experienced, and compassionate. Even the people who cut the lawn and uh, cook the food, they are dedicated. It's, we are a family, all of us. The ones who work and contribute the ones who send and allow us to be here, and the uh, students ourselves. And just remember, 
how fortunate you are that you were able to spend time in this young man's paradise. And uh, I could say a great deal more because I tend to be extremely verbose, but my lovely wife has uh, insisted that I, I be brief. And that uh, is about as brief as it ever gets. <laughs> but I, I as, as I came out of here, uh, I, 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 I'll tell you quick. I, I, <laughs> And I wanted to fly. My nickname at school was the Admiral. Uh, and I was out sailing boats on purple and so forth. And uh, my making models and uh, devouring the multi-volume Samuel Ariel, uh, Eric Morris, Morrison's uh, multi-volume uh, uh, history of the US Navy in World War II. I'd gone through that a couple of times. Uh, and when I went out of here, the, the way I picked my next stop, I had looked at the students here that I admired the most. A lot of them were going at the time to Suffield Academy. I said, if these people I respect are headed for Suffield, I want to go there. I applied, I was fortunate enough to be accepted. And uh, the headmaster down there, App Severance, very wealthy man, and he spent most of it on resurrecting that school from a very sorry state years before I arrived. And he had a first class, uh, prestigious uh, school that was wonderful, it just didn't have a long history. But uh, Suffield is, was a great place to go. And after those two things, uh, getting into the Naval Academy was fairly simple. And uh, at, at the end of the plea year, uh, they told me that I was never going to be able to fly in the Navy. I went down because I already had several flying licenses. And uh, I went down to sick bay where a Navy flight surgeon who was assigned there to treat the uh, Naval and Marine pilots, he rode out and presented me with a first class physical with no restrictions. And his next word, I've got bad news for you, you'll never fly in the Navy because you have something. It was unmemorable and impronounceable. I don't know what it was, but I knew I was never going to take an jet aircraft off in a carrier, uh, and that slowed me down. And uh, I, uh, I went back to my room, and I said, I gotta get out of here. I closed the books. I succeeded in flunking out after the first semester of youngster year, and uh, they threw me out. And I had a four-year obligation to the Navy as an enlisted man. But one of the other things I had learned here was the value of knowing what's going on and don't all the time work with childish uh, things. Uh, be aware of your surroundings, for things you care about. Know about the workings of them. Uh, cultivate friends in high places and low places. Sometimes the guy on the shop floor can move things faster and quieter than the guy in the top office. So you have to, you have to play both ends. Uh, and uh, that's what I did. On the way home, I stopped in at Bradley Field down there north of Hartford. I went into the Hamilton Standard Division of United Aircraft. I explained to them why I had gotten myself ejected from a place that some of the best people in the country wanted to be at, but I couldn't fly, and I was going to fly. And uh, he offered me a job, and I took it on the spot, and I asked for the perfect job. I got involved in the space program. So two weeks out of the Naval Academy, I had a job as a technical writer for equipment 
and hardware on the lunar excursion module. And this, of course, is without any degree. Uh, and that shielded me when the Navy Department finally did the process, sent me the, uh, the order to report Chicago for induction for a four-year enlisted man's career. And my boss giggled and made some calls. And the next thing I knew, I had a, a letter saying, you are vital to the space program. Uh, stay exactly where you are. Your obligation for enlisted four years is canceled. But let us know if you leave there. And that's, that, that, that was the It's great to be educated, it's great to work at it, but there's nothing that beats low cunning and wit. And my father taught me a lot of that. And dad also taught me that if you're trying to do something under the table, make absolutely sure that it will do no damage to any other person while benefiting you. And that was the type of man my father was. Uh, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I ended up with a 40-year career flying for airlines and uh, places like uh, NetJets where I ran uh, ben and J. Lo around and other Eagle Brook people. I had, uh, I, had, I had Kirk Douglas on the airplane one day with his wife, sweet woman, and uh, we, we landed somewhere. I don't remember where, but some other people were joining them to go on somewhere else. And uh, we got talking with him, and uh, of course I knew that Mike had been here, and I, I uh, had some uh, contact with him. And uh, as I'm talking to Douglas, I, uh, I slipped in to him that uh, I had met you previously, sir, and I was extremely impressed. It was one of the high points of my life, and I will never forget it. And now it's getting uncomfortable. Who the hell is this? <laughs> and uh, at that point, he, he became very nervous and his wife is soothing him. That's all right, that's all right, dear. And I, I let him off the hook and I said, as I remember, it was about 35 or 40 years ago and it lasted about five minutes, at which time he, he broke out in laughter. He said, where the hell was that? And I said, that was at Parents' Day in Eagle Brook when you came up to visit Michael. And uh, he dissolved in laughter. And uh, from then on, whenever I saw him in an airport or on an airplane, he was most cordial we were old buddies. Uh, Good job. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>